Hello and welcome back to Road to Arceus. The series has finally returned. I know it's been a while, but the new ranked ladder makes this genuinely possible. It felt like after doing one video a week or something like that, that doing these videos, it was just going to take ages and I'll never get to Road to Arceus because of the rank reset being so harsh and it being so difficult to escape the Great League. And that's something that even the PDCGL dev recognized. So they introduced this new ladder, as you can see here, just quickly skimmed over it. Um, and it's going to be so much easier. I myself have almost gotten to Arceus just by playing along generally, right? I think the highest I ever got to was like, I think, no, the highest I got to was 20 rank points away from getting to Arceus rank on my YouTube account, which is one that I don't take too seriously. So I was like, let's see how I can do. And I got really high. So it proved that it's possible. I think I just missed it out by tilting a lot, <laughs> which is kind of funny. So that's something to bear in mind. But either way, it's possible now. Either way, I copied that deck. So I thought I'll go for a future deck. But we got the future and the Raging Bolt EX free deck. And really enough, the rewards that I got from the previous set, uh, sorry, from the previous rank ladder and the rewards I get from these decks has given me a lot of credit. So I don't need to, you know, work around this free deck or anything like that. I was worried about like the rotation going, how am I going to do this? Because look, you can see all these decks here that I'm having to just delete now. Um, also, pardon me, I'm going to burp a lot because I am a gassy boy. And this video doesn't actually have any cuts. So I, I'm just, just doing it on the trot, lads. But yeah, it took a long time to cut that. Can, can they just add a feature of like select tool? I don't know. But either way, we went for the Raging Bolt EX. I thought I saw this these uh, list performing well on the on the Limitless page and thought, let's put that in, man, and give it a go. So I had to, again, another long process of replacing artworks and exchanging and stuff. It's just long. Man, if they, if they could make this more efficient, it'd be so much nicer to try out new decks and stuff. Because I see people complaining, even on my videos, about putting in uh, certain artworks in a list because they have to just do all that. And I get it, man. I do get it. But either way, look, let's put that aside. I'm excited to try out this new rank ladder. It's genuinely possible. We need 1620 to get to Arceus. And we're just going straight into it, man. I, I know I was talking about something before. I completely forgot. Distractions. Well, hey, happens all the time. But we're going to do it in the same format that I always have. All right. Um, I should not say always, but also recently, which works. It's like five games, roughly a video. Uh, so it does equal, a, you know, a pretty good time frame when it's sped up. So it's going to feel very fast. But when you see the gameplay itself, you're going to realize it needs to be fast because the, the time it takes my opponents to make decisions is forever. And that's fair. Um, so that's something to bear in mind. But it does actually work out. You can still follow what's going along at this speed. So. I thought it's a good way to go about it, and I couldn't cut it up because I edit based on audio, and I'm obviously not doing any audio here, so it's, it's slightly different. Either way, we're playing against the hands. This is why I wanted the Raging Bolt. It seemed to go well into the beat stick decks that are running on the ladder, right? Because it's just heftier, it hits harder, you know, and that really can take advantage of the future hands, which is all over the place right now, and, uh, you know, the fighting, all of that. It just seems to work well for the ladder right now. A lot of my decisions on what decks to play are based on what I'm comfortable with, what I want to try out, and ultimately, what I think is best for the ladder. The meta is not the same. Bro, look how long it took me today. <laughs> I'm sitting going, well, what attack do I do? What attack? You just go for a, uh, a Bellowing Thunder for one. Um, while well, discarding one energy. I, was, I was, uh, didn't know which attack to go with. I'm also learning this deck as I'm playing it as well. So this is like my first time ever trying Raging Bolt in this way. And because of that, there's a lot of learning going on in this video as well. Of me trying to understand the deck a bit better um, and experience it. And it's great because this series does give me the opportunity to try out top tier decks um, in a way that I wouldn't otherwise be able to unless I'm just playing by myself. So it's a fantastic way for me to do that. Whilst also trying to get to Arceus, which I said is very, very real. But yeah, I, I thought Raging Bolt was a pretty solid pick. The reason it's doing well on Limitless is because there's a lot of these decks going around that Raging Bolt can deal with. Um, again, it's not really reflective of the top tier, really, unless we really see it perform at EUIC, which is going on now, actually, and I will be going tomorrow. So by the time this is out, I mean, you might if you might be in England watching it in the morning, if it's some reason, <laughs> if for some reason you're one of them ones, uh, I am going to be there on the day uh, this uploads for the people in the UK. So yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely buzzing for that. Say hi to me, as I've always said for so long. But yeah, now I'm just sitting there going, right, okay, I've got these attackers here. I've got the Sandy Shocks. I've got the wing. I just delete them. Like, honestly, I thought, you know what? Let's just go with the, the Sandy Shocks EX. And the thought process there, even though I do whiff here, was that the Sandy Shocks EX is just something that the hands cannot one it KO, unless, of course, they go for a Lost Vacuum, which they don't really have and they don't really play in this deck. So I thought, my, my Sandy Shocks EX is just going to be fine. It's going to one it KO those cheeky buggers, those cheeky hands. 
Um, and then we always have the Raging Bolt to follow up with. And I've realized the Sandy Shocks really goes a long way here, man. Really does. It feels like the, the Arcanine deck that we wanted Arcanine Sandy Shocks to be, right? If the massive one at KO in the Raging Bolt, which kind of fills that Arcanine slot, whilst also having the Sandy Shock checked, which can self-charge itself and act as a pseudo attacker if you are whiffing. And I saw that a lot when playing this deck. I was like, there's a lot of times where I actually kind of just want to do Sandy Shocks a little bit. Um, just to come in for an attack and let the Raging Bolt finally finish something off. But you can see it coming in here. I'm like, okay, let's just get the Sandy Shocks up and running and simply go for it. Trying to consider some other plays here. This is where things really start coming in. But I'm like, I need to draw. Um, even though I have six cards left in deck. <laughs> I need to set up for a couple more KOs here. As you can see, I've only taken my first two prizes now with six cards left in deck. I didn't realize how aggressive this deck actually is. Um, but... I really, really, really do like it. So we've got some important cards here as well. Um, they're probably going to try and come up with the Maridon. That's what I anticipated. And just go for some acceleration. That way I don't take another insta hit. Um, and they do just that. Get a Baton down. And a Baton's a bit of an annoying thing. But there's no other hands for him to accelerate to. So as long as I bring up this uh, Maridon. Maridon. <laughs> it basically is Maridon, eh? As long as I bring up this Hansies, then we're cooking, right? We take it out. They've got nothing else to work with. And that's kind of what I'm doing. Going for the Prime Catcher, going into the bot, and then just switching, keeping that bolt alive, because that's where I'm going to take the massive KO next, because I can't one it KO that's that's uh, the, the, the cheeky crowners, you know, without some serious damage. And I realize, okay, I'm going to probably need to boss it. They're going to bring my Raiden up again. Um, so I'm now considering my plays, thinking, right, I need a boss. And thankfully, I didn't use my power pad earlier. So I have the boss literally there and then. I have the gear for it as well. The perfect situation where I can just gust up a crown for game winning from six prizes to zero in three turns in a row if they don't pull off a miracle. They do bring up the Greninja and they actually go for a peak acceleration. Now, this is where I was like, oh, I could I could be out of energy. This could be a problem. I could have overplayed. We topped it the boss. That's great. But what if I'm screwed? I checked my deck, saw the energy, realized I had a vessel, and went, oh, I can just retreat. <laughs> just manually retreat. Sandy Shocks has done the job. Raging Bolt's going to finish it off. And we're going to hit a massive, what was it, 560? Didn't need to go this far, but I just wanted to hit that big number. It's always a bit of fun. And that's going to be the first victory today. So in this episode, we are trying to get to Alakazam, right? So how do we 220, Alakazam's at 280. That's what we're gunning for. Uh, usually, I want to rank up every episode. That's the goal. Obviously, it doesn't always turn out that way. Um, and but either way, again, as you can see, it's another hands. Bro, I have picked the correct deck today. <laughs> um, and here I'm just trying to decide what I want to do. Uh, the early turns I always find a bit difficult because I seem to always sit in hands that are like, oh, this is a bit awkward. I have to bench a Luminion now. I have to... Do, do. Deciding whether to squawk or not was always difficult, especially in this matchup. And I actually wasn't going to do it. As you saw, I was going to go Greninja. But I changed your mind. But they scoop anyway. <laughs> um, so that's another quick and easy dub. Wonderful stuff. Um, and I, love you. I want to see, by the way, the reason why I'm putting these like match-up uh, intro fits before the game, instead of just going to the game, is I want to see what it's like with um, looking at the rank on the top left and seeing what it's like. So I remember being at like Mew League, right? And I'm actually being someone in Ultra League. Or there's times when I've played on a different account with lower rank. Um, with like great ball that I'm matching up against people in Master League. They're just, the matchmaking system is just weird. They just aren't doing it right. Um, even we've got Dialga here. But yeah, as I was saying, I picked the right deck against the hands. The squawk's always a bit of trouble because the hands can KO the squawk for free prize cards. And that could be a problem if they get another hands KO on a two prizer. So the squawk is always debatable, but it worked out. Um, it has worked out so far. But they're playing Dialga now. And this is one that I was curious about. Again, really about learning here and trying to figure it out. Definitely would have made some misplays, that's for sure. <laughs> but I'm just thinking about how I do things and trying to manage my resources. I feel like that's where things go here. I've also realized now I don't really have a good attack to pull off. So I'm just going to prime, go for a, a Greninja. Now, I think I changed my mind. No, I don't. Okay, so I decided to just pass with Greninja. I think what I should have done there is bring up the Raging Bolt and then just go for... Yeah, we lose the Switch card, that sucks. Um, and, and go for the... I forgot the attack name, but the one that lets you discard and draw six. I think I should have done that. I think that's an attack that I underutilized this episode um, because it's a very strong attack and I can understand why it's useful because a lot of times in this deck with the Bolt, you see yourself just with awkward hands and needing to draw out of them. But thankfully, the Greninja's Moonlight Shuriken came into clutch there and the Energy Switch also coming into clutch 
allowing things to take place. And then I bench a Sandy Shocks, uh, the baby Sandy Shocks. Not sure why. I think because it can just get a nice and easy KO on something like a Beldum or something eventually. And also can act as a single prize attacker. So if they do like go for a Star Chronos KO, I can at least promote that for them to KO. So that way they take free prizes instead. But they pull off a boss's orders and Star Chronos, my Sandy Shocks. And there you go. So the baby Sandy Shocks coming in saying, okay, you're going to take three prizes here. You're not going to take four. And that's kind of what I was gunning for, why I benched it. And are we going to see it pay off? It depends if they get another boss. If they get a boss, it's trouble. Bit of time to think here. They're really thinking about it. Again, these are the moments that I try and cut in my videos because it takes golden ages and we did get away with it. So the damage has been dealt. The Star Chronos has happened. We now need to build up a one hit KO. And I think that's exactly what we do. Look how fast that Raikou just, just decides, do you know what? I'm going to go from nothing and Oko you. <laughs> that's the power. But the Zamazenta comes through. Granted, not taking a KO yet, right? Can take a KO with Defiance Band, but not taking a KO just yet. But they boss and KO the Sandy Shocks. And this is where it gets rough, right? Because they just keep taking out my Sandys and not, I should really, actually no, the Raging Bot, I think I should have put the, the tool card on, but those Sandy Shocks, man, they're vulnerable. Those are boys you don't really want to see. Um, but either way, I do need them. I need to, again, just build up this Raging Bot as much as I can to be able to follow up and KO a Dialga, which is likely coming up next. So I'm like, okay, I need to set up my board, get to a point where I can just one it KO whatever comes up. And that's my best bet. They could obviously just boss as well, and that would be a problem. But we found ourselves in the way we've traded our prizes here in a situation where we are just in a bit of trouble here. Uh, but the Matang's coming in, and they only hit three, so not enough to KO, but they boss. The amount of bosses this Dawny got, mate, was outrageous. <laughs> this was boss, boss, boss. You can't beat that, but we tried. And look here, I'm playing against a Mewtwo. 975 rank while I'm sitting here with two something. Like... Bro, this isn't a ranked ladder, I'm telling you. And uh, you see how crazy I was there. I went wild with Luminion. I was so annoyed I, I started Luminion. <laughs> so annoyed. But anyway, just going for a deck check, trying to do some, some prizes and look, uh, you know, figure that, that stuff out. I, I try to remember to prize check. I'm so bad at prize checking, man. It ain't fun. It ain't fun, I'm telling you that. But either way, this hand is not really something I'm comfortable with. So I just go for a switch cut, go into the bolt, hit an Iono, try and remove that cheeky cheeky tool card so i can get a one hit ko and try and slow my opponent down obviously we're playing the ancient box which doesn't feel good just in general right it doesn't feel good because of the obvious right it's a single price trade they're not gonna go and put their muni x down if they do play it they're just gonna try and get that rolling moon up as quickly as they possibly can to come in and then just be like okay i'm gonna do a job on you and that's that this was a difficult ultra though but i needed to draw cards and unfortunately we didn't get there so this it's finally the turn what I go for. Was it Roaring? Is that what it calls something? Rise? I don't know. It's a bit blurry for me right now um, because of the preview on Premier Pro, so I can't actually see the attack name. <laughs> but either way, I decided to finally utilize that discard draw. And they try and gust me to try and, you know, get an easy two-hit KO. Didn't work out. And now I'm sitting there thinking, right, they've got a Mimikyu down. I need to be prepared for that. So I benched the Baby Sandy Shocks, which deals with Mimikyu so nicely. Um, but I'm sitting there going, right, okay, I need to make sure I have an attack following up here. And... Ultimately, I have a retreat as well. There's no retreat option. So I was worried that they were going to bring up Mimikyu. So I put free energy on the bot in the active before attacking, thinking if they promote Mimikyu, I can say this vitality attached to Raging Bolt in the active. And that's free energy to do the retreat. And that way I can just deal with the Mimikyu. So now I have options, but I think I just keep going with the, with the game plan of, you know, trying to just build up and take KOs. And that's that. The Collapse Stadium, by the way, is beautiful in this deck. Constantly being able to get rid of Squawks, Luminions, it feels really nice. But what doesn't feel nice is taking one prize KOs here. However, we are ahead, right? We are three prizes taken and they are still needing to take six, meaning technically I do have a pretty strong advantage here. I just need to find the cards, except I'm not. This is a turn where things don't work out my way. There's nothing really I can do. I'm obviously the magnetic absorptions online. That's great and all. I'm just trying to get shocks up and try and do all that. But nothing, unfortunately, couldn't deal with the Mimikyu this turn. So I decided to just boss up Greninja and hope that they haven't got a switch card in an eight card hand. I don't know what I was thinking, but it's all you can do, right? They do retreat. And look at that. They throw a Great Tusk Miller down. So I've got to be a bit careful now with milling myself to a point where they can just take me out. So that's another thing to worry about. But more disappointingly, that turn right with the Mimikyu KO 
is everything, right? Because that was the term where if I took it, I would win off price trade in general, right? Where my shocks would be able to just take KOs and win, um, regardless of how they do it. But unfortunately, that's not what's happened here. Actually, no, I think no, I would have been in one prize instead, actually. So I don't think it matters. But I had to come up with the shocks. Didn't really have much option. Instead, I should have gone up with the sliver wing. That's why I went wrong. I should have just gone with the sliver wing. So I think I had the play for that. And I decided to go for that instead. Um, actually, no, I think now I could have slivered wing. Wait, did I? Was it now or was it the turn before? I don't actually know. But okay, no, here's I think where I went wrong. I should have just killed the Mimikyu with the Sandy Shocks. But instead, for some reason, I decided to go for the Moon. Um, I don't know why I did that now that I think about it. I think I did that because I was like, well, they need to say that and attach to get a KO, which they're going to do anyway. And that will just KO them anyway. So I was like, oh God, I should have brought up a single prize. So if they get the say to KO, then they don't take two prizes and I just win. So I made the misplay there of promoting and finishing off with the Sandy Shocks when I should have brought up Sliver Wing or Sandy Shock, something like that instead. So that was a massive misread on my part, losing me the game, unfortunately. But look at this. It's another hands. Let's go. <laughs> that is what I love to see. It's like, you know, we've had a rough, a rough moon game, very winnable, um, which is crazy, right? Because that's just, just a bad matchup in general. Yet I still almost won. That's how wild this Bolt deck actually is, man. It actually is really good. Um, but yeah, happy to see this. But as you can see, there was a, I didn't notice at the time, but there was a grass energy discarded there, meaning this is not just the hands. This is future box which is actually a bit more difficult because they have different attackers and not just the hands for us to one it KO. And the Sandy Shocks, bear in mind, is weak to Brass. So if I come with the Sandy Shocks, take out our hands, they come out with the Iron Leaves. And with the Iron Leaves, they take out my Sandy Shocks. So it just changes up the price rate a little bit, but it's a bit concerning. Now, I am now debating again, getting with the Forest Seal Stone, some Pokemon there, but I'm like, I just want draw. I just want draw. I want to get as much draw as possible, set up my Seders and just keep KOing with the Bolt. That's what I thought was the best play. Um, but yeah, I'm like, okay, let's just keep KOing the Bolt. At this time, by the way, again, I completely forgot. To, oh, I didn't, didn't forget. I didn't notice that Grass Energy. So in not noticing that Grass Energy, I'm like, oh, we're fine. Just, just charge up Sandy Shocks, get some Fighting Types, attack us down. As you can see, I've got Sliver Wing down there. And... Um, Oh no, I think I did get Sliver Wing actually with the uh, the Forest Seal Stone. Because I was anticipating a Iron Hands to come up. And if it does, then I can just Sliver the Wing and KO it. And that would be nice. So yeah, that was kind of the idea. But I'm I'm always torn between getting Sliver Wing or just going with the Sandy Shocks usually. But Sliver Wing is a card I can just attack with right away. Whereas Sandy Shocks needs a, bl a little bit more work. You know, it's great after they take a couple prizes. But now here's an example of Sliver Wing doing its thing. Where in this case, I actually... No, I would have been able to attack the Sandy Shocks, but it would have cost an energy switch. So I thought, you know what? Oh, no, I decided to do it anyway. <laughs> what is Blood doing? I can't even read my own plays. It collapsed again. That was lovely. So I decided Sandy Shocks, not anticipating the fact that they do have Iron Leaves in the deck because I missed that grass. I should have undoubtedly gone with the Slither Wing. Because if I went to Slither Wing, even if they did come up with something, then it would be fine. But I'll tell you what I was super excited about. They benched a Raichu. And I'm like, this is perfect. I just bossed this Donny up. And that is literally two more prizes for free. Like, excellent. Come up with a Sliver Wing, boss it up, and then all we've got to do is take one more prize, and we win. But they Forest Seal Stone, and they pull off a pretty cool play. They go for the pod. And I was like, the pod? And they bench and I leaves, and then just Oko oh, my Sandy Shocks. And I was like, okay. That's a bad outcome. I did not expect that. And now I'm in a position of like, oh God, I need to KO this leaves now. Or at least try to do that. Or instead try and go for a different outcome and try and do something different. And yeah, this is where I was like, oh yeah, Prime Capture. Just bring up the Raichu, prepare the bolt so whatever comes up can be one it KO'd and then you kind of win, right? So now I'm in a very, very strong position here that I've put myself in where even if I get Iono'd to one, I can still win this game. If they bring up my Raging Bolt and KO it, the one that's damaged, I still have enough energy to take a one it KO on anything. If they bring up my healthy one at Raging Bolt, they can't one it KO it. So we're in a position of just winning. It's literally checkmate. We get Rock Sand, but it literally doesn't matter. Funnily enough, they weirdly enough stick up the Sandy Shocks and they should have stuck up the Greninja because that's the thing I can't retrieve. <laughs> but either way, we got it. There is the KO and that is another dub on the board for us. One that just came out of nowhere, though, huh? Very strange. I was like, what? Leaves? Threw me off, mate. Pod and leaves. Absolutely for a beautiful play, but not enough for the Bolt. And I'm liking Bolt right now. I'm like, oh, this Bolt is wild, man. It's so aggressive. 
Um, I, I, it, hello, there's a new, this kind of scared me again, because I was like, oh god, it's ancient box all over again. But I see psychic energy and I'm like, ah, we're playing Gardevoir. Now this is a bad matchup, right? Take a sip and see. It's a bad matchup because of the price trade, naturally, right? Late game power, we struggle in late game. You know, the Ionos are going to be very, very problematic. Single prize is coming in in big damage. We're only taking the single prize KOs, but my opponent is struggling here, right? They started just one roll from his Magus. We got enough, thanks to our speed, to take out a KO. And I'm like, you know what? I just need to take KOs here. That's my main priority. Just take KOs as, as quickly as I can and then go with that. So then I identified quickly I could go for a Sandy Shocks and go for a KO there as well. But I decided to not do that. My original plan was to Sandy Shocks and Prime Cat Trapper Rolls. But the Curly is the draw power. That's the refinement. So I need to deal with that first. And I have Sadis Vitality. I think I did. Uh, I don't remember. I don't know. I didn't pay attention if I got it from the prizes. But I think I did. Or at least an out. I either had Poké Gear or Sadin. I was like, okay, I probably will be fine. Um, and if not, I can always just go for an attachment and then prime catch up a Rolts anyway and hit that 60. That said, they did evolve. Well, they benched the Rolts, so there you go. Yeah, is what it is. But um, I thought I'd be fine. I just need to just get KOs as quickly as possible. Just stop them from drawing. That's my priority. I can't let them draw. And this is where we start getting our stuff out. And I'm like, okay, now. Now's the time. Consistency. And the Baby Shocks comes in clutch, taking out a Curlio with just one energy. Wow, that 90 for one actually goes a long way and is such a strong card going into the Gardevoir matchup because it's just like I can pretty much want to KO anything you give up um, for one energy whilst also being a single prize Pokemon is super strong. But either way, they go to Mimikyu and look at this, I had the switch card right away. <laughs> I felt horrible. Um, so yeah, either way, that's a KO on Mimikyu. I'm like, this is going so, so well. Getting Iono, that's unfortunate because I was only see two cards and now I'm struggling a bit with draw. So I rotted to get some energy back, which I know is counterintuitive to Seder, but I rather to get some energy back. I'm like, yeah, I need to start using Greninja here and trying to get some draws and get out of this. And then my opponent actually hits the guard of War, hits an Iona. I'm like, oh God. So this is definitely winnable. Obviously, Poke Gear, get a boss's orders, you know, that will do the trick. And then we can just boss up guard of War, hopefully do enough. Oh, actually, no, we wouldn't actually done enough, would we? It's only 210. So now we're struggling, absolutely struggling. So they bring up the balloon, obviously. And also, I'm, I am just thinking at the same time, well, what if I just get Seder Vitality? I can KO anything anyway. I'll just get a Seder's Vitality, and then I can just KO the Drift Bloom, and then after one more KO, I, I just win, right? So now I'm debating doing the draw play or just KOing. I decide to KO and think, well, a Seder's Vitality, and I basically win, right? Seder's Vitality and Attachment, and I win. But I think I actually have played, I think, three Seders at this point. So the odds of me hitting Seder are just, they're non existent. They're not there. But we do get Iono into Iono which is terrible, as a plane flies over. And they're just doing their thing. Gardevoir, this is why it's called the Comeback King, or the Comeback Queen, because, wow. Literally, me going down to one prize remaining, they have five, they are clawing slowly their way back. But that Sandy Shocks, what a beautiful top deck, actually, because it just recovers energy. And I'm like, okay, things are getting scary now, I need cards. So I finally decide to go for the Raging Bot, where instead, maybe I should have done that beforehand. Um, actually, no. No, I think it was the play to take the KO, because now I only need one prize. So regardless, I can do something. So they bring up the Sandy Shocks, but I'm like, okay, well, if I just bench Aluminion, I've got boss for game. So I'm like, okay, let me just go for... Oh, I didn't even, I didn't even need Aluminion. <laughs> just took the KO. So thankfully, our speed in the early turn got us there, and we are finally at the Alakazam rank. Getting there, let's collect some rewards. Really happy with that. Won some games that I shouldn't have won and lost some games that I probably shouldn't have lost. So a bit of a mixed bag today. But that guard of our win, that felt good, man. Just the speed of Raging Bolt was enough to keep up with that late game Iona. So just take one prizes again and again and again. You know, that's where it was wonderful. But anyway, we get some credits. We're like 8,000 credits. That's really nice. And now we sit at Alakazam at 280. So that's going to be it for this episode. Looking forward to doing more in the future for sure. It's going to be an absolute blast to actually try and get to Arceus with it being reasonable. But it's going to be difficult. Even at this low level, it still feels hyper competitive. So I think we've got a journey ahead of us, but we'll leave it there. Thanks for watching as always. Take care and peace.